does uh, West Off play? Uh, no, no, Westy won't, won't play this week. We've made a couple of changes. Um, we lose Tom Cleary and Kane Farrell will go out of the side. We'll bring in Boyd Woodcock and Jared Leonard. How close was West Off to being picked? Yeah, he's in the travelling part. He's, he's going, so it's, he's not far away at all. But uh, the, you know, the areas that we're looking for, a small forward, Westy's probably not that. And the, you know, to be fair to Jared Leonard, who's played in the back line this year, when he's played, he's played really good footy. He, he probably deserves first crack at the uh, back line. Any temptation to rest in the place? Any to temptation to rest any players? No, nah, no, nah, not at all. No, we're certainly in, not, not looking to do any of that. So we want to compete right to the end of the home and away season and set ourselves up well, hopefully, for, uh, for a strong finals performance. Um, I think it was kind with that we had balls dipped in oil and all that sort of stuff. Do you guys any particular tactics for the gather? No, we haven't, put, we haven't put the balls in oil or anything like that. We, look, we have, had, we have had the grounds being wet a few times and we've done that deliberately, but um, outside of that, we understand that there's, we've been there and played what if we played up there um, 10 games or something up in Queensland this year? So, you know, we've only played seven in Adelaide, so we've played 10 up there. So we, we're used to the conditions and they seem to be getting, even as you, you're pointing out, they seem to be getting a little bit more slippery than they have been in the last couple of times we've been there. Are you a good wet, wet, wet weather side? Um, I, th I think we've been a good side across the season in most conditions. I think we've played some solid footy in wet weather. I think there's games that we've played really well. I mean, last week, was a great example where we, when the rain came, we, we, we got going a bit in the second quarter and I don't think we'd favour either or. We, we're prepared to play in whatever the conditions are, but we know we can handle both conditions. Did those slippery conditions work in Boyd Woodcock's favour to get him the nod this week? Oh, no, not so much. I mean, it was Kane Farrell, you know, it was similar type size and, you know, pressure forwards who can put on a bit of heat are really important. Um, certainly doesn't hurt, hurt if the ball's on the floor a bit for Boyd, but, um, you know, he's, he's, look, he's, his performance this year's been quite remarkable. He's, going into his fifth game, I think, now this week. And it's a great story when you consider how far back he was at the start of the year. To COVID's been good for Boyd, as silly as that sounds. He's, he's made the most of the extended breaks that we've had through this season, and he's, he's, he's put himself in the frame as an AFL player now. How much talk is there internally in the club about the minor premiership? Nah, look, clearly it's part of what we've done all year, but that's come about because of the way we've played and, and, and the process that we've delivered on each week and that's what we've got to do again this week and at the end of the day if we, we're coming up against a really good team who are really desperate to play well as well and both sides want to play well going into the finals that's that's the clear message someone's going to win or lose but for us you know it'd be nice to complete what we've done all the way through the season but it's not a be all and end all I mean I'd love it if you ask me do I want it yeah I do want the team to get some recognition for being able to do that it's a pretty big honour when you consider how many teams have been able to do it over the journey but there's bigger stuff to get on with um, after this week. And the fact that you've held the top of the ladder for the entire season, does that add any more motivation? No, nah, as I said, you, we, we would like to finish and we want to beat Collingwood, so simple. If we beat Collingwood, we'll end up on top of the ladder, so they'll take care of itself. But no, it's, um, you know, it's just part of the journey that we've been on this year. It's been a remarkable season for the AFL. It's been a remarkable season for us. So yeah, it'd be nice to, to get to the end of the home and away season in good, in good shape and on top of the ladder. But look, we're one, two, regardless We've got an idea of what's coming and we just need to play well so that we're ready for what's next too. You know? And if we get distracted by anything other than Collingwood, we'll get in trouble. How important is it to play well at the Gabba, considering where the grand final will be played this year? Yeah, well, again, we've played there this year. We've played there and we've won there. We've we lost a game there, but we've won there too. So we look, we've, we've, got, we've had good experiences in Queensland full stop as a football team this year, so we, get, we wouldn't have any, any, any um, fears of playing at the Gabba. But it's nice to play there. You know, with the last round of the season, so, um, you know, we, we don't get a choice in it, but it's, it's OK that we're going to the Gabba, knowing that hopefully at some stage later in the year we, we'd love to be able to get back there very late in October. Can you sort of set you up to say one week at a time, but I mean, can you, can you just start thinking about finals? Has the word finals been spoken about during training? Or? Oh, look, as a footy club, we've spoken about the opportunities that present themselves throughout this year for us, and, and that, that was quite some time back now that we had an opportunity to to put ourselves in the finals, then we had an opportunity to consolidate our position in the finals and, and then we've had another opportunity to, last week to lock away a top two. So every week we've had a challenge and an opportunity to, to look at what we can get out of winning that game and that's what this year is again. It's, you know, as you said, set me up say one week at a time but it's win this game and it puts us in a great spot. There's, you, you can't qualify any better if we can do that. Is it fair that Richmond and Geelong are getting so much favouritism for the flag and you guys are sitting in the top two and aren't getting looked at as heavily? No, I think it is. I think the two teams have been great teams and that's what should happen. And uh, you know, I think Brisbane's the next team that obviously, and West Coast, they're the teams that have been rightly talked about because they've been there before. We've, 
we, we hold our own issues here. We, we've been out of the finals for a period of time. We've had to earn some respect back and we're slowly getting there. It doesn't get given to you, in, you know, overnight, so you've just got to keep working away. But I think the, you know, the clear two best teams that, that we've seen over the course of the season would certainly be, look like they've been Richmond and Geelong in the last five or six weeks, so they deserve it. Lysett v Grundy, um, are you looking forward to seeing what plays out there? Oh, look, it'll be, in, it'll be a good battle. I mean, Scott's been in really good form for us and we know how good Grundy is for Collingwood and how important he is, but you know, we've got Laddams also to back up and help. I think we worked really well with those two boys last week. You know, another game with them together is really important for us too, and that's probably as, you know, as significant a thing for us from a performance point of view as we want, is we want to see high-quality rucks because we know they're coming and, and we don't get any more qualified in that space than Grundy, so um, our two rucks are going to have their work cut out. How beneficial has this nine-day break been for Scott's knee? Oh, I'm sure it's been good for anyone that's carrying any type of little niggles and there'll be plenty of them in this condensed season. I mean, there's been games in four, five, six day breaks. So, you know, it's as silly as this might sound, it's, it's been a long time waiting. It's been a long time for, for nine days where we've been dealing this short process turnarounds and stuff. And nine days has been a fair, a fair while for us to wait. What about Laddams? Do you think he's really kind of um, taken his COVID um, breaches and uh, become a better player in any way? Oh, nice. Look, his mistake was made. He's done what he needed to do to, to recover from that. He's, he's now on building his football journey still, and I think he's still got a long way to go on that. And you now we know he's a, an exciting young ruckman, um, but he's got a lot to learn and a lot to, to improve on. But you know, he trains every day like he wants to get better. He, he turns up at this footy club every day trying to improve, and at, at, at his stage and age of his career, there's lots of improvement to come. Oh, um, can I just ask about the decision to fly up to Brisbane tonight as opposed to tomorrow? Why was that made? Oh, it's just an opportunity through the AFL that it allowed us to go up the night before. If we do have to go up there at some stage later on in the season, um, that will be the, the way we would go. So there's an opportunity to trial that and make sure we're ready for that so we don't get any, any further disadvantage by having to travel away for it. Like any side who has got to travel to Adelaide, I imagine they'll be the same. They'll be able to come the night before and, and play against us. So I think it's just bit of common sense that we're allowing sides to be there just 24 hours before the game. You delisted four players this week. Can you talk us through that decision? Oh, there was, yeah, there's always a difficult time and list management decisions are always difficult, but you know, the, this season seems to have made it a, you know, um, almost the right thing to do if you knew that people weren't going to be a part of it and they've had to live inside in the hub and the bubble that, of AFL football. It didn't seem right that you know, if there was no further opportunity. And, and I think those people that we've spoken to appreciate that that was honest and, and as um, clear as it could be, as soon as it could be. So they're, they're always difficult times. Every club's dealing with them now. And you know, luckily for us, we've got you know, a good squad that's still going on to play quite a bit more football, we hope so. But we, we did allow some people to, um, to get some adjustments back in their life and move on with what's next. Tom Jonas timed it well with the baby. Yeah, yeah, Tommy and, and Millie had a great, uh, great result on Tuesday with the, with the baby daughter Matilda. So um, you know, it's it's a great result. He's been a fantastic captain, and he's I'm going there. I'm sure they're going to make great parents, and Tom will be a great dad. So um, you know, he's got a big job to do uh, tomorrow night to our forest, and that's to get back into footy and get going because he'll be. We've all lived in the world of um, being new parents. It's an amazing time for him.